Hello everyone, welcome to session one of LTech 651 Interactive Multimedia Production. Welcome summer 2022 students. In case I haven't met you, my name is Dan Hoffman. Hello, here I am, right here in digital form. And as you probably know, I'll be your LTech 651 instructor this summer. Now, I wanted to take a minute to introduce myself as I want you to know there's a real flesh and blood human behind this online asynchronous course. In other words, I'm not a bot. And I'm going to work real hard to prove that to you this semester. So let me begin by telling you a little bit about myself and how I got involved with multimedia production. My background is in instructional technology and media, and I've been involved in the field of education for many years. In fact, I've had the privilege of working with learners at every conceivable level, from pre-K all the way to graduate school. Outside of teaching, my specialty is designing and researching digital learning environments. I've been involved with lots of projects that explore various aspects of teaching and learning in digital spaces, all of which have involved multimedia in different capacities to improve or extend the educational experience. So now that you know a little bit about me, let's learn more about the course. What is a course titled Interactive Multimedia Production all about? Well, as the name suggests, the course is going to be about multimedia. But what is multimedia? In the simplest of terms, multimedia means nothing more than using more than one medium to communicate. In this context, multimedia usually means presenting words and pictures together. Now, the words can be printed or spoken, and the pictures can be anything from static graphics such as illustrations, charts, and photos, to dynamic graphics such as animations and videos. So in this class, when we're talking about multimedia, we're talking about some combination of words and pictures that are being presented more or less at the same time. Importantly, we'll be studying multimedia in the context of a college of education. For that reason, we'll be thinking about multimedia from an educational point of view. For instance, we'll be talking about multimedia instructional messages. So what are those? Well, multimedia instructional messages are simply words and pictures designed to foster learning. These instructional communications can be delivered in many ways, including paper, computers, or even face-to-face. -face. The point is that they're designed intentionally to support learning. And of course, if you have multimedia instructional messages, you're likely to have multimedia learning. Now, multimedia learning is the process of building mental representations from words and pictures, something we do all the time without even thinking in our day-to-day -day lives. But believe it or not, how words and pictures are put together impacts how quickly and easily someone can select, organize, and integrate the information being presented. And that's exactly what we'll be focusing on this semester. Now, to do all of this, we'll look at lots of examples of existing multimedia instructional messages, some good and some bad, and of course, we'll be learning how to produce our own multimedia as well. Throughout our journey, we'll often refer to a number of guiding questions to help us think about multimedia and its place in education. These questions include, what should an educator know about multimedia? And what should an educator know about designing multimedia? We'll also contemplate various theories that can help us understand how people learn with and from multimedia. And we'll also ask what modern tools can help us design and develop effective multimedia learning objects. Of course, these guiding questions tie right into the course's learning objectives. So let's take a look at those. Our first learning objective is to understand, analyze, and evaluate how people learn with and from multimedia. And how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to study how humans process information, learn about different types of cognitive load, and we'll be reading about how to design multimedia messages so that they work well with the way humans process information. 
Our second learning objective states that we will understand and evaluate interactivity and its role in learning and engagement. How will we do this? Well, we're going to distinguish between cognitive and behavioral interactions. We'll examine functional, technical, and psychological definitions of interactivity. And we'll assess how varying levels of interactivity impact perceptions of cognitive load. Our third learning objective states that we'll understand and apply multimedia design principles. We'll do that by examining research about specific principles that help people process multimedia messages. We're also going to practice implementing our own multimedia instructional messages using various design principles, which leads us to our final learning objective creating original multimedia messages using modern authoring tools. To do this, we're going to test drive different platforms and tools for combining words and pictures in meaningful ways. This part of the class will be very hands-on and will emphasize the design process. It will also create opportunities for providing formative feedback on our own original designs. So that kind of gives you a brief overview of the course itself. So let's take a look at some of the basics of the class. The first thing that I want you to take note of is the overview module in Canvas. There's a couple of important links and documents here that I want to walk through. First and foremost, we have a link to the course syllabus, which is a Google Doc that you can view. I encourage everyone in the first week to take a close look at this and to let me know if you have any questions or if anything is unclear. The second link is to the office hour sign-up sheet. And those of you who have worked with me before know that this is an editable Google document that allows you to sign up for 20-minute time slots. Typically, office hours will be held on Tuesday evenings. To sign up, just follow the link and write down your name. If for some reason the available times don't work for you, just shoot me an email and we'll make alternative arrangements. The third link is to my Zoom room, and that's the virtual space we'll be using for office hours and for any other type of meeting we have during the semester. So just click that link to be taken directly to my Zoom room. I want to end by focusing on the course calendar. You probably know already that this is a six-week semester, so the course is broken into six sessions, as shown here. Because we're compressing a full 16-week semester into six short weeks, this course is going to be pretty intense. For that reason, I ask that you keep up with the class and monitor your own understanding. And please reach out if or when you need help with anything that we've been talking about. Now, each weekly session will begin on Tuesday morning, usually by 9 or 10 a.m. Each session will end on Monday night, and each week you'll be responsible for viewing the course video presentations. Please note that there may be more than one video, completing the readings, and submitting the assignments. Importantly, there will be multiple assignments due in a single session, so watch those due dates. My suggestion is that you log into Canvas as soon as you can each Tuesday morning to figure out what's due when for that particular week. This will help you plan ahead and stay in sync with the rest of the class. So let's take a look at the session one due dates. As you can see here, there are five assignments due in session one. Don't worry, most of them are really easy. But what I want to point out is that the first four of these assignments are due by noon on Saturday. And the last assignment, Peer Review 1, is due at noon on Monday. This will be our typical weekly schedule. I find this cadence works really well because it gives each of you time to review one another's work, and it leaves me time to review your work before launching the next session on Tuesday morning. Hope that makes sense. Okay, everyone, we're out of time for today. Have a great week, and I'll see you in Canvas.